What's up guys? An apathetic indie kid coming at you with the day after Arkansas edition. I'm coming at you on behalf of Talking Vols. Talking Vols comes at you Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And the guys will come at you each Saturday after the game with the post-game chat. And uh, God bless them right now for dealing, for going on with these post-game chats because I know there's no energy. There can't be any energy from any of us right now. And uh, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I've had some good viewership the last few weeks and uh, and hopefully we'll continue to grow it here. Uh, what else to say? Let's get right into it. Arkansas 24, Tennessee 13. Tennessee's now standing at two and four on the season. That's four straight losses and four straight ugly losses, by the way. Uh, I'm just gonna save stats. We all know the stat. We don't need to know the stats. We know what the game looked like out there. And, uh, you know, sometimes in life, it's time to have those tough conversations. Well, that's where we're at with Tennessee football. It's time to have that tough conversation. I'm not talking about the tough conversation. Will we ever be back or anything like that? I still think there's too much that's down there. There's too many resources. There's too much tradition. Uh, as mediocre as Tennessee has been, as mediocre at best as Tennessee's been over the last 15 years, it's still a, a kind of a national brand. It's not what it once was, obviously, but, you know, it's a, it just feels like Groundhog Day all over again. And uh, it's time to have that tough conversation regarding Jeremy Pruitt. And uh, I'm, I've honestly never been sold on him. I was starting to think maybe this was guy to turn it around. There were some things I like. Obviously, the end of the season last year was a, a good way to end the season. Come in with a couple wins this year. South Carolina game, you knew they didn't play well, but they still pulled it out. That, to me, seemed like uh, you know it's something Tennessee hadn't really been doing. And then they really handled Missouri well wheels come off after that um uh, really the wheels since halftime at georgia the wheels have totally fallen off so so we're on blocks at best right now if not sitting on the ground i don't know what has happened here but this is a, a football team that with no energy i mean the most energy i saw was a kicker hit his field goal last night and showed some energy um I mean, we we can sit and blame the quarterback position all day long and stuff. I think it's pretty obvious, so at this point, that that's not solely what's going on. As, as we've seen four quarterback, of course, we've only seen Shrout for one possession. I think Shrout's an afterthought at this point. Um, you know, the game plan was just for Garantano to manage the game last night. He did fine with that, but, you know, there's – there's no creativity down there. Jim Chaney has been awful. Chris Winky is awful. I mean, you see each quarterback coming in. It doesn't matter which one plays. They don't look any different. Uh, they don't look any different. Whether, you know, I'm not – the only position that's doing much of anything on offense is running backs. Receivers are underperforming now. But in in fairness, you know, it comes back on. you got to have somebody to – get the ball to you as well. And it just doesn't seem like much is going on. Um, you know, so, you know, you recruited all this speed. We're using Hyatt a little bit. The other guys we're not using on their offensive line. I mean, it is what it is. They're not great, not bad either way. Um, defense, defense is doing – is pretty sad this year um again that tough conversation is you've got texas a&m coming in this week and then uh, i can't remember i know florida's last i can't remember if vanderbilt or auburn is after that but it, i i don't think there's a a for sure win left i think we should beat vanderbilt but honestly we should beat in arkansas and should beat in kentucky as well there's no shame in losing to alabama or georgia there's just not, and uh, should have played them a little closer. Yeah, I'd like to see that, but there's no shame in losing those guys. At this point, we shouldn't be losing to Kentucky and, and Arkansas. 
And hats off to and and I'm going by without not giving Arkansas credit. Sam Pittman's doing a great job at Arkansas. Um, you know, there's it looks like he he's a guy that might be able to get that program going back in the right direction again. And Stoops at Kentucky, you know, I keep saying we shouldn't lose to him. That's based on history. Stoops has done a he's done a fantastic job at Kentucky and still building that program, getting it better. But uh, the job Jeremy Pruitt is doing right now sucks. It's an F grade for sure. And, you know, again, I, I mentioned her, why give the guy a raise an extension after an eight-win season? Is that the bar now with Tennessee football? I mean, our AD who give that, really, you know, this may be an unpopular topic. We won't blame it on Kiff and Dooley. The downfall started with Phil Farmer. He was let go for a reason. If you want to go back and look at what – Lane, Kiffin, and Dooley had to work with. After, it was due to Phil Farmer. Okay? You can disagree with me all you want to, but that is the truth. That is now this same guy who started the downfall makes the hire for the football program. Again, wasn't his fault. John Curry screwed the pooch on that one. But, uh, you know, at this point, would Greg Schiano have been the worst thing in the world? I don't think it would have been. Um... Uh, but again, Jeremy Pruitt, we're looking at year three, and this looks eerily similar to what went down with Butch Jones. The guy's coaching not to lose now, and he's losing. There's no, no fire in the team. There is no creativity. It's just the same bland, no improvement, no adjustment staff each and every week. And... If this team goes two and eight or three and seven, it's it just like Jeremy Pruitt said with his defensive line coach, if you know it's not working, there's no use prolonging it. Two and eight or three and seven, there's no use prolonging it. I want to say Phil Farmer has the balls to step up and make a replacement on it because your recruiting is probably going to suffer either way because they're going to get negative recruit. They don't – another team doesn't have to negative recruit against Tennessee. If these recruits are watching Tennessee, that's all the negative recruiting you need to see. Other teams are wasting their breath if they're negative recruiting Tennessee. All you got to say is look at their product on the field. It's horrible. It's an embarrassment. And the true reason – Let's see, this was, I think this was the end of the Butch Jones era where I stopped doing talking balls. The true reason I stopped doing talking balls, yeah, I was moving states that year, but it was due to my apathy with Tennessee football. I'm just fed up with it. Love them, always will, will always watch, will always support. And you go through those cycles. Every program goes to it, but my goodness, this it, it just never... You, you'll get a glimmer of hope, and then it's right back and right back at the bottom again. That's the true reason I, I stopped doing it. I, I was tired of talking Tennessee football. I was tired of just every week we see the same thing on the field. And, and really, you could almost with Tennessee football almost record a show at the beginning of the season, replay it each week. It's just nothing changes. There's no creativity. Or, or anything along those lines. And uh, I don't know. I mean, with that being said, though, maybe maybe there's a – Pruitt has to give the fans and the program some kind of hope, okay? At this point, you've got to go with Harrison Bailey. You've got to. Let him get his lumps and get ready, okay? And I'm not blaming – JG at all. Jarrett Garantano leaves and goes to Duke under David Cutcliffe or something. He's in, he's going to look like a good quarterback. Okay, his the coaching he's gotten down there is an absolute disservice to coaching. And uh, I can't even remember at this point. And, and you guys correct me on this. And I I know it was Larry Scott was offensive coordinator the last year under Butch Jones. I can't even remember who the quarterback coach was. I can't remember if it was a grad assistant or what. And uh, 
I know some of you guys remember that more than me. That's due to my apathy. I would have known that years ago, but now I can't even remember that. But what what's it going to hurt at this point? And uh, and again, this is not me slamming any other quarterbacks or anything. I think you got to put Harrison Bailey in and go with him. Let it happen. Let him take his lumps. Stop with this mental uh, fragility. I guess you want to say that we're going to hurt his confidence in this and that. Falls G JP said it a few weeks ago. If you're worried that him taking a beating is going to you know, wreck his confidence in this and that, he wasn't the future to begin with. Let's go with him. Let's see what we can – and help him out with the play. The play con's not helping anybody out. You know, teams are slanting Tennessee to death. Tennessee has the slowest developing slants – in the history of football. I mean, it's just awful. I'm not going to slam any players. These coaches, though, there's not a single one of them down there. Maybe Jay Graham. Besides Jay Graham, who else is earning their money in Knoxville right now? Not a single one of them. And, uh, you know, you can take that for what you will. But at the end of the year, if this is a 2-8 and eight or a 3-7 and seven program, the year ends with Florida absolutely blasting you again in Knoxville, and there's no hope there. It's time for Jeremy Pruitt's bags to get packed, and it's time to get somebody else in with some creativity. I know we can't afford another coaching search, but we also can't afford to prolong what is not going to work. And just like Jeremy Pruitt said, if it's not working, it's better to go ahead and cut it early instead of prolonging it. All right, and that's not word for word. I don't remember what he said. He probably had some bad grammar in it, like I can do sometimes. But uh, it, we'll, we'll see where it goes. I hope he turns it around and stuff, but let's just say I've got some heavy, heavy debt. The red flags have been there from the beginning. I just, you know, it, it's just, I don't know what else to say about it, guys. But, uh, you know, I will say this about us. We're a strong fan base. We're a passionate fan base. I know we'll all stick with them. We'll continue loving Tennessee football. But I think we're all just getting to that point. It just doesn't bother us anymore. We've become accustomed to losing. Uh, yeah, last year was – had some nice – had a nice record last year. But, you know, you've I, – I don't think anybody expected eight or nine wins this year by any means. But it wasn't unrealistic to expect five to six wins either. And uh, barring a miracle, this team's not getting there. And uh, we'll see where we go from here. Let's hope for the best. Again, my apathy has set in, and I fully expect three and seven, if not two and eight at this point. I don't see us beat A&M. don't see us win at Auburn. I don't see us win against Florida. We'll see about Vanderbilt. Vandy played Mississippi State tough last night. So I expect if Tennessee beats Vandy, it's going to be a tough game. But, uh, you know, let's, let's coach to win in Knoxville. Let's stop coaching not to lose because it's not working. And we saw, we've seen it too many times down there when you start doing that. That's one thing I'll give Derek Dooley credit for. I felt like Derek Dooley's last year, that guy was coaching to win. Right there. Unfortunately, he made a bad hire that cost him his job on defense. If he'd have made a decent defensive hire, he probably got at least another year, if not more, down there. Um, Butch Jones, bad hire. But Butch Jones, about year three or so, after, let's see, what was it, Dobbs Jr., when we, the year we played Oklahoma and lost in overtime, I felt that, you know, there were some games they lost that year they shouldn't have, but I didn't feel they coached not to lose. I still felt, uh, I don't know, I'll take it back. It, it was around that year they started coaching not to lose, and it and it showed in the program. Jeremy Pruitt's coaching not to lose. What happens when you coach not to lose? You lose. It happens every time. Um, let's hope for the best next week against Texas A&M. Time to go with Harrison Bailey. At least give give some hope that you're trying at least show some creativity right there. But uh, that's going to be it for this week. Uh, you guys keep hanging in there. Who knows? One day it'll happen. 
who knows when. Uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid that extension and raise is probably going to give us another year of this garbage again going forward. But uh, that's it for the day after. I'm the Indie Kid. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe. You guys take care, and I'll see you next week.